Hello, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about how we can improve and move forward in your idea. You've started with a sketch and you want to create a fantasy type of painting where you combine a real figure with uh, elements of fantasy. So we're going to start with your drawing of obviously your sketch and we're going to get a reference and you have already selected a really good reference here good lighting can clearly can see the figure a good figure and also you've included this eye which you want to use elements of on your actual figure and right now as you can see your artwork uh, does need a little bit of work uh, it looks like it kind of is lost the drawing um, some of the features are a little bit lost and the colors aren't quite right their colors need to be adjusted so we're going to do that right off the bat so that you can have a stronger idea of or a better idea of what colors you can be using if you choose to so that's where we're going to start and I want to start right off the bat and recommending a book to you and that is 1500 color mixing recipes for oil acrylic and watercolor by William F. Powell and in it he recommends starting most of the colors uh, skin tones with yellow ochre and that's what I'm starting here um, with yellow ochre and red cadmium red as you can see there just mixing up what he calls a master color I don't like that word I'm just gonna call it our main color okay or our mass color again here I'm actually using magenta on the second pile so uh, yellow ochre and magenta mixture to get this color and then I'll zoom back out again and on yellow ochre and alizarin crimson alizarin crimson for the mixture on the bottom I'm just going to move these over you can see that they look very red uh, it'll be great when we have to lighten them up and make a lighter flesh tone there are so many different types of flesh tones that we want to be able to mix all of them and we can definitely use these flesh tones in darker skin for darker skinned people as well. We just have to instead use mm, some other colors that you'll see here coming up. Uh, the first pile up there, I just added white to the um, lizard, the, to the cadmium red and yellow ochre mixture. Then I added some green, and I'm actually using phthalocyanine green phthalocyanine p-h-t-t-y cyanine um, and then for the last pile you know I just mixed in ultramarine blue for the next row I'm actually going to do the exact same thing so the first one is just going to get a little bit of white for that mass tone and then the next one gets that same phthalocyanine green and then of course the ultramarine blue and then down at the last mixture where I have the yellow ochre and the alizarin crimson mixture I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to mix in a little bit of white for the first pile and the second little pile I know they're all getting mixed all together but in the second little pile I have that green mixture that I'm adding into that and then the last one last little pile I'm going to add a little bit of the ultramarine blue and uh, just mixing a different green now just to see what that looks like once I add it to this see what kind of browns I can get and what kind of flesh tones we can get play around with it and you'll find that when you add complementary colors to these pigments to these piles you're gonna get different browns you do want to keep track and this is what I want you to do somewhere it doesn't have to look as neat or as orderly as what I have drawn on this or taped off on this canvas but you do want to keep track of your colors so find somewhere maybe a piece of canvas or uh, an old piece of watercolor paper find somewhere to put your colors on so that you can keep them and then write down notes to yourself about what colors you mixed this is going to be a really great idea for you to just keep track and so that you can actually see where you started and what colors effects you can get here are some additional colors that I use I just wanted to keep in mind uh, that you there's so many different flesh tones that you can get uh, by mixing so what I want you to do 
is the following. Uh, because you're drawing and your painting kind of got lost, I want you to start with an umber and linseed oil and mineral spirit mixture, very thin paint, and start to draw in some of the features that you perhaps lost. I'm using a round brush, very small round brush, and I'm trying to paint those areas in or sketch those areas in. And all I want to do with this very small painting, I'm painting about 9 by 12 inches, is to just very quickly become a little bit more familiar with the composition. Just finding out the masses and the silhouettes of different color areas. And I just want to establish the color and value relationships. So that's all I want to do with this sketch. I want to understand that first before I move on at, to a larger um, painting, more finished painting. And you can do all of this drawing with umber. Again, uh, my umber is thinned out by using mineral spirits and linseed oil or some kind of medium, whatever medium you have. Because you're going to want to make changes and you want those changes to quickly uh, happen and by mixing with those two mediums you can erase off some of these lines. You're going to see that I, I did that uh, to make the jaw a little bit longer. Um, you're going to want your lines to go on really light in certain areas like right here. Um, you want to measure across and you want those lines to disappear as well. So. You know, add a little bit more. You've probably done this before painting in painting class uh, where you've just thinned your oil paint out. So thin your oil paint out and then establish your features. I'm just going right in for the eyes. It might be a little, a little low on this face. And I'm going to start to establish or block in where the shadow shapes are. So remember she has a shadow along that side of her, her nose. And again, you see here, it's so easy to just erase away once uh, your colors are really thin. So again, I'm just gonna draw this nose and then block in where the mouth is and then reestablish where the chin is so that it's not too small. So you're constantly correcting the proportions and you're constantly correcting some of the features. So don't worry about that part. The part that I want you to make sure you're doing is keeping your brushwork nice and light, keeping your brushwork thin, your paint thin, and trying to really get a more accurate representation of the sitter trying to get a likeness. Try and capture those shadow areas. They're really important. The outside silhouette of our figure is important, but then the silhouettes or the shapes and masses of the shadow are important as well. So you can see that on the side of the face here, her right side that creates a definite shadow. That's the far side. It's facing away from the light. So it's definitely gonna create some, some shadow there. And so just block that in. But as you can see, I just added a little bit more oil. Again, these are all things you're probably familiar with. The more oil, or if you're painting with acrylic, the more medium and water you use, the thinner your paint can be. So you want to go over there really nice and, and light and block that in. Now you'll see all throughout this painting process, I do get to areas where I'm struggling to get uh, some of the outline of the face correct i'm trying not to worry too much about that i'm just trying to block everything in about where it needs to be and not stress out so much about getting everything exactly correct because this the, the painting is a process and as you draw you're going to be correcting the form you're going to be correcting the actual drawing portion of the picture so try not to worry too much about that as you can see it changed um, got a little bit closer to um, what it needs to be. Just be very delicate in certain areas. And it may be hard to see 
on your drawing. So you may have to go a little bit darker uh, on your painting, uh, but try again to make sure you're using a round brush, sharp round brush, and use it like a pencil. Just go in and just draw these features in. You can again uh, make sure you get the repaint the top portion of the hair. Like here, you can just use, you don't have to use any black, please don't use any black. Just use, that's uh, just umber and uh, mineral spirits and linseed or medium to block that in. It frames our head really well and it helps you with the tonal values as well. It helps you to see them a little bit better. So block all that in, get to about there, and then we can reevaluate uh, some of the flesh tones. Then we can go back in, start to mass in, and just block in where the flesh tones are supposed to be. Soften things if you need them soften. You see, I said, did that on the side there. And if things get a little dark, it's okay. Uh, remember, with this, you can just take a paper towel or a rag or even a clean brush with a little bit of mineral spirits and lighten things up, as you can see there, and blend them. So, this is what I want you to do for your drawing, okay, and your painting. Uh, eventually, we'll go over. How to add color and I did that in the subsequent sketch here and I've been working on that so I will go over with you decisions about color and then we'll talk about how to change that eye so that you can get that reptilian uh, eye on her left hand side try and keep everything just as you see it in the reference photo and that will help us with getting everything in the right place so it will help us with scaling the eyes correctly getting the eye socket where it needs to be before we start to add those fantasy elements to the actual picture so i hope this was helpful and if you have any questions please uh, email me or leave a message thank you bye